Standing Order 1E provides that the Assembly shall now proceed to elect a Speaker. I seek nominations for the position of Speaker. I call Mr Barr. I nominate Ms Joy Birch. Does the member accept the nomination? Are there any other further proposals? Uh, there being no, the time for proposals has expired. There being no further proposal, I declare that Ms Birch, the member proposed, to have been elected as Speaker. Thank you indeed, um, members, and can I say it is um, an honour to be elected um, and unopposed to show support across the chamber, so thank you for that. There is the next item in of election of Chief Minister, but if I may, with your indulgence already, members, um, ask you to stand so I can do acknowledgement to country. Tarawa Nuna, Tarawal Nanawal. Yangu Nalaweri, Duni Manyan Nanawaweri, Darawaweri, Nangara, Dindi, Dalawa, Nanawabun, Yin Jamara, Lijin Yin. Thank you, members. So the next item is business is the election of the Chief Minister. Ms. Berry. Uh, member, do such a member, uh, does you accept the nomination? Mr Barr. Uh, yes, Madam Speaker. Um, is there any further proposals? Mrs Jones. Does the member accept the nomination? Nomination. Are there any further proposals? Uh, the time of proposals has expired. So, members, we will um, move to an election of an, a ballot for the Chief Minister. <coughs> ballot papers will now be distributed. Will members please write on the ballot paper the name of the candidate for whom they wish to vote and hold their ballot paper for collection? And the papers will be coming to you now, members.
Celeste, Celeste, Celeste. Members, the result of the ballot is Mr Andrew Barr, 16, Ms Elizabeth Lee, 9. Therefore, Mr Andrew Barr is the candidate with a majority of votes of members present and voting and is now declared Chief Minister. Well done, Chief Minister. Chief Minister. Uh, thank you, Minister Speaker. I seek leave to make a statement. Is leave granted? Leave is granted, Chief Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm incredibly humbled to have the privilege of serving again as Chief Minister. I wish to thank my colleagues for the support and trust that they have placed in me to lead the government. I sincerely thank the people of Currajong for their strong support once again at this election. And I thank the people of Canberra for voting for a progressive government. Madam Speaker, I congratulate you on your election and on behalf of all members in this place, wish you well in what is a very important and occasionally challenging role. I congratulate all of the new and returning members of the ACT Legislative Assembly. I know you have all worked tirelessly to engage with your local communities over the course of your campaigns. It is an honour and a privilege to represent Canberrans in this place. And I know you all appreciate the significant trust that has been placed in us to deliver for our community. Madam Speaker, four years ago, we marked the first time in Australian political history that a parliament included more women than men. And I'm proud that the ACT Legislative Assembly continues to have the highest proportion of female politicians of any parliament in Australia. Madam Speaker, this year has been a year like no other. From bushfires to toxic smoke to devastating hailstorms and then a global pandemic. Throughout all of this, protecting the health and livelihoods of Canberrans has been our top priority. And it will remain so as we continue to focus on our economic recovery. In these most difficult of times, the people of the ACT have voted for a progressive government and an ambitious vision for the future. They've also voted for a clear and comprehensive economic plan as we emerge from the greatest economic challenge of our self-governing era. We will remain focused on this 
We know the COVID-19 pandemic is not over and there is a lot more work to do. Our community will need continued support as we respond to the ongoing threat of the coronavirus. Madam Speaker, protecting and creating jobs will be central to our economic recovery. And we remain committed to growing Canberra's employment base to more than 250,000 jobs by 2025. We know that a secure, well-paid job is about more than putting food on the table or paying the rent or mortgage. It provides meaning, structure, connection and opportunity in people's lives. Our government has a track record of driving down unemployment and creating jobs. Just last week, the State of the States report revealed the ACT was the second strongest performing economy in Australia. Thanks to the strength of our jobs market and our low level of unemployment. Throughout the pandemic, the ACT has maintained the lowest unemployment rate in the country. And we've been the only state or territory to see unemployment fall in the past quarter, down to 3.8%. The government's view that significant investment across a range of areas, including health, education and renewable energy, will continue to create jobs and keep people in work. We have already delivered the first stage of the light rail project, Gungarland to the city, and we are committed to extending the network south, a project that is expected to create 6,000 jobs. One of our biggest projects in this term, Madam Speaker, will be the expansion of the Canberra Hospital. A bigger and better Canberra Hospital will deliver more beds, more surgeries, more support for people with mental illness, a larger emergency department, and importantly, more doctors, nurses and health professionals. Over the next four years, we will hire at least 400 new nurses, doctors and healthcare professionals across the Territory's health system. 2020 has clearly highlighted the incredible work of our health professionals and reinforced the need for quality healthcare. Our effective response to the pandemic would not have been possible without their tireless work. That's why we will continue to invest in quality healthcare. This will include starting the new network of walk-in health centres across Canberra, building the new elective surgery centre at the University of Canberra Hospital Precinct, delivering 60,000 elective surgeries over the next four years, and establishing a centre for excellence in caring for older people at Calvary Hospital, and increasing our investment in mental health funding. Madam Speaker, like our nurses, Canberra teachers were there when we needed them most, ensuring that children continued to learn, even at the peak, the first wave of the pandemic. We will ensure our teachers remain the best paid in the country, and we will employ 400 new teachers and support staff and new teacher librarians to support the great work in our education system. We believe every public school should be a great school. And that's why we will continue our nation leading investment in digital learning, expanding our Chromebook rollout to every public high school and college student, and providing 300 of the most vulnerable households in Canberra with free internet access. We will also establish a future of education equity fund to support disadvantaged families with their educational expenses. And we're committed to investing in school infrastructure to serve our city's growing population, upgrading existing schools and building new zero emission schools in the Malongo Valley, West Belconnen and Gungala. Madam Speaker, the ACT has led the nation with our response to climate change. We are the first jurisdiction in Australia to be powered 100% by renewable electricity, which is driving down energy bills and we will further cement Canberra's status as the renewable energy capital of Australia by building the biggest renewable battery storage system in the country. We will continue to reduce emissions without placing financial pressure on households. 
parliamentary and governing agreement signed yesterday between ACT Labor and the ACT Greens further entrenches the government's commitment to climate action, taking the next essential steps to net zero emissions in the ACT's future. Madam Speaker, I am proud that Canberra is Australia's most inclusive city. We are a refugee welcome zone. We are also part of the global welcoming cities network, formally acknowledging this city as one that continues to welcome migrant and multicultural communities. There has also been a lot of hard work and reform to ensure Canberra continues to be the most LGBTIQ plus welcoming city in the country, including the development of the capital of equality strategy and the accompanying action plan. The government is committed to ensuring Canberra remains an inclusive and welcoming place to live. An important priority in this parliamentary term is the modernisation of the Territories Discrimination Act. We look forward to getting this work underway. And we're committed to, the, to understanding and responding to the needs of everyone in the community as we face the impacts of COVID-19 together. Madam Speaker, I want to take this moment to congratulate the Greens Party on their strong result in the October election and to formally welcome five new members. <clears throat> Clearly, the strong support for progressive parties in the election reflects the community's desire for progressive leadership at this time. I look forward to working with the Greens Party to deliver the parliamentary and governing agreement that we signed yesterday that reflects our shared progressive values and our shared commitment to continuing improvements to health, education, transport and housing, whilst taking real action on climate change. The agreement will ensure a stable territory government that benefits from the distinct but collaborative approaches of our two political parties. Madam Speaker, I also want to acknowledge the Canberra Liberals. You raised many issues in the last parliament and during the campaign. We often disagree on politics and policy. However, I am optimistic that there will be times when we do agree, and I look forward to working constructively together in those times. Congratulations to Elizabeth Lee and Julia Jones. Leading a party is an honour, and it's a challenge. And I wish you both well in your new roles. If I can be so bold, I offer one piece of advice. Be nice to the Chief Minister. <laughs> I also acknowledge former Opposition Leader Alistair Coe and thank him for a respectful and hard-fought campaign. You kept me on my toes throughout the process. Perhaps I don't want to be in the boxing ring with you. <laughs> Finally, Madam Speaker, I wish to thank my Labor colleagues and the entire Labor family for all of their hard work and dedication to our cause. I thank Deputy Chief Minister Yvette Berry and acknowledge the re-election of Rachel Stephen-Smith, Chris Steele, Mick Gentleman, Suzanne Orr, Tara Chain, Michael Pedersen, Madam Speaker Joy Birch, and I warmly welcome our newest MLA, Dr Marisa Patterson. Sadly, we say farewell for now to Gordon Ramsay Bet Cody and Deepak Rajgupta, and we thank them for their contribution to this place. I thank all of the Labor candidates and their supporters who work so tirelessly and passionately over many months to get us to where we are today. I wish to pay special thanks to our campaign director, Mel James, uh, and my team. Under the leadership of my chief of staff, Michael Cook, I observed on election night in this place, we're only ever as good as our staff and the support that they provide us. And I thank my entire office and the staff of every single member of the Labor Party. And I acknowledge Greens uh, and Canberra Liberal staff as well, who work so hard for their causes. I want to thank my family, and my husband, Anthony. It's nice to be able to say that, my husband, Anthony, for their ongoing love and support. We simply can't do these jobs without the support of our family and friends. And finally, Madam Speaker, I again thank the people of Canberra for putting their trust in me as Chief Minister. 
I'm proud and humbled to lead Australia's most progressive jurisdiction. And we will work hard, Madam Speaker, every day to protect the health and well-being of Canberrans. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Minister.